morning and you're sitting Shabbos through this evening. And then so uh, as you finish Shiva and as Shabbat begins, you take it off. Okay, we don't wear this on Shabbat. Uh, we don't mix the grief in the morning with the, the joy of Shabbat. So customarily, uh, we take this off for Shabbat. And if you'll repeat after me in first the Hebrew, then the English. Baruch atah Adonai. Baruch atah Adonai. Eloheinu melech olam. Eloheinu melech olam. Dayan, dayan ha-emet. Dayan ha-emet. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Adonai our God. Adonai our God. Who is a righteous judge. Who is a righteous judge. Amen. 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 If you take it from the bottom in the middle and tear up a little bit, a half inch, an inch, it's fine. Easy to tear by themselves. You don't need a blade. Yes, exactly. Okay. Got it. Yeah, it just needs a little red. Right. 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 Let me, this is the last prayer that Rabbi said with it at the cottage. Dave just moved the stone. They moved the stone away. to Shirley. I'm Rabbi Eddie Sukal from the Shul. We begin with verses from the Psalms, these beautiful poems, ancient, and words that we hope will provide comfort to the mourners. Oh God, what are we that you have regard for us? What are we that you are mindful of us? seems that we are little more than a breath. Our days are like a passing shadow. We come and go like grass. In the morning it shoots up renewed and yet in the evening it fades and withers. You cause us to turn to dust saying, return O you mortal creatures. If only we were wise and understood where we are going. But this we do know. Mark the wholehearted, behold the upright, they shall know true peace. To you, Andy and Tina, and to Barry, and to your families, we know that you grieve in a world that's a little bit darker today. We who have mourned understand that in your silence there is sadness. These are days of tears and lament. These are days of grief and sorrow. We gather with you to remember a beloved mother and grandmother, beloved sister. We gather with you as you remember her 
to reach out to you and to embrace you. That we might comfort you and surround you with love and caring and compassion. And we are with you today not only that we might comfort you, but we call out to God on your behalf. Shirley had a love for all of you that united you in life and brought you together. She helped create the unit that was and is your family. And here's one of the great challenges of mourning. We are called upon to grieve and to grieve fully, to mourn her loss. And at the same time, we are asked to be grateful and filled with gratitude for the gift of her life, a life that was long lived and well lived. Grief and gratitude, they go hand in hand. We can't have one without the other. We have both of them. We feel both of those emotions simultaneously within us. And so we do grieve today. And you'll grieve as you have the last several days, you'll grieve in the coming days and weeks and months. And that's as it should be. To experience her loss and to feel her death. And you will also be filled with thanks for the wonderful life that she had. For the companionship that you enjoyed with her along life's path. Companionship, I think I should mention at this point, that included more than the occasional shot of scotch. <laughs> you will be thankful for the gift of that companionship. And you'll be grateful for the many gifts of her heart and her mind. Those things that she did and said that brought joy and happiness into your lives. And so as we, as we grieve, we are also filled with gratitude for the many precious remembrances that we have. Adonai ro ilo echsar bino teshe yar vitseni al mei minuchot yina halini nafshi yeshoved. Yancheni v'ma'agalei tzedek l'ma'an shemo Gam ki elech begeitz al mavet lo irara ki ata imadi shiftecha umishantecha hema yenachamu taaroch lefanai shulcha neged soverai lishanta vashemen roshi kosi rebaya ach tov vachesed yudafuni kol yemei chaya deshafti bevet adonai lo orech yamin the words of the twenty third psalm. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name. Even when I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of God forever. Two members of the family are going to speak this afternoon, Andy and Justin. I'd like to call upon Justin to begin. Probably should have accepted that Kleenex for my mom because I'm probably gonna. Like, <laughs> I was like, I got this. But uh, so <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's so funny. I was holding it together. So. When Bobby and I 
Take I'm your so time. sorry. Relax, take your time. I'm so sorry. It's all right. I had it all together one second. It's okay, Justin. I might need a second cleaner. Oh. <laughs> I have another. You have a cleaner. Okay, so. So when Bobby and I were young, our, our father left us and my grandma helped raise us along with my mother. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she was 95, so, you know, when she left, it wasn't a, a, a big surprise, but looking back on the past, you know, it really, it, it really hit me. Um, so, you know, our, our father left us, and my grandma and my mom were in Bobby's world. She raised us since we were little kids. She was always there for us. She was, you know, she was a huge part of our lives. Um, you know, just when I think of her, I just, just think of someone who was as equally caring as she was. You know, she didn't take any crap, you know. <laughs> and uh, she was a very strong woman. She looked, you know, she had a very great sense of humor. I picture, you know, we'd come pick her up from her house on Orchard and she'd always be holding a styrofoam cup of J and B with a lipstick mark on it, and I always thought J and B stood for Justin and Bobby. And I'm like, oh, she got you know a special scotch made. I'm like, that makes sense, right? Um, and uh, I don't know. She was just always there for us. Um, you know, she would tell us crazy stories about how she ran a drugstore with our grandfather. Um, that passed away when I was what, about a year, under a year. Um, you know, they once had to break in and she like held a shotgun <laughs> like, while Bob boarded up the store and you know, just crazy stories like that that just showed how strong and resilient she was. <coughs> um, you know, and it was funny because she was very superstitious you know, if we walked around and there's a pole, she would make sure we were on the same side of the bowl. And, you know, if someone dropped a knife, she would say, oh, that means a man's coming. And, you know, she had all these little superstitions. But as superstitious as she was, she was also a realist. I remember one time when I was a young man, you know, like I said, she was really a no BS, straightforward kind of woman. And I remember one time she said, we were talking about the afterlife, and she said, you know, I honestly don't think anything happens. They put you in, the, when you die, they put you in the ground and that's the end of it. And uh, this is, the, and I honestly believe that too, as someone who's not a very spiritual person, but this is the first time in my life I've hoped she was wrong. <laughs> and I hope she's really up there looking down on this. I'm sorry, I was a mess. I really am a pretty good speaker usually. <laughs> and I uh, just thank all of you for being here and, Please, like, remember her because she really is, to me, she'll always be a legend, you know? I have tons of stories I could tell. Um, some don't really seem appropriate. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you at the, I'll tell you at the after party. Or whatever you want to call it. But, um, yeah, I just, I just want to say, like, you know, she was amazing. I'll, I hope she'll stay in everyone's hearts forever. Thank you. teaches that words that come from the heart enter directly into our hearts. Indeed they do. I'd like to call upon Andy. Let's go. Ooh. I'm sitting down. Are you okay? Nope. Okay. He's had a leg problem. Thank you, Justin. Well, I, I guess this just shows how close my grandmother was to my nephews. She was like a second mother to them. So Justin's crying is totally justifiable. 
and it makes sense given their closeness. It's hard to lose a mother. There's no love like a mother's love. My mother did everything for me. She nursed me when I was sick, helped me with my homework, cheered me on when I was sad, packed my lunch the night before the, the next school day, and taught me, more importantly, how to be a decent person. That was her most important gift to me, how to be a decent person. One uh, morning I was making an egg omelet, and I was putting it together effortlessly, and uh, suddenly I was wondering, you know, I had the eggs, the cheese, the milk, and I wonder, well, how do I know how to do this? And I had to think back. My mother taught me how to make an egg omelet. Not that complicated, but nevertheless, I did it like it was second nature to me. And I was thinking, okay, well, this is one of the legacies my mother left me. She taught me so much. And that's why she's always with me. Um, she was with me all the time, so you don't really lose your mother. You just remember all the things she taught you and how to be a decent person. Um, she even taught me how to ride a bike. So she hasn't really left me. She's inside me. She's there when I do things. My sister, Gina Vaughn, is the superhero of our family. She stayed with my mother for five long years while my mother was incapacitated. She stayed with my mother till the very end, and that takes courage. There's really uh, no way I can talk about my mother without talking about my father, and he died 40 years ago. And he's kind of been forgotten after all that time. But my mother and my father, as they got older, they actually fell more in love with each other. And uh, my mother and my father were at a family gathering. And uh, a member of this gathering said, you know who looks great tonight? My father automatically, without thinking, said, my wife Shirley, of course. So that's not who this member meant, but my father was blindly in love with my mother all the way to the end, and they had their adventures together. If you give them an island with a nice white sandy beach and a sparkling ocean and a casino, <laughs> it has to be a casino, that is heaven to them. So they were uh, co-adventurers. Also, along with them, my Aunt Ruth Daniso would also be a co-adventurer with them. And there's a story where, I think my mother told this to me, I don't know the name of the casino, they're on a Caribbean island, and the casino is located in the middle of this island. So they had to drive around the island to find the cutoff that led them to the casino in the middle of the island. Well, my father was in the back, navigating, of course. My Aunt Ruth, Daniso, was driving and my mother was sitting next to them, next to my Aunt Ruth. And uh, if you ever put my Aunt Ruth and my mom together, you will get hours of non-stop talk. <laughs> it's amazing how, I don't know where they got up, but it, they didn't have a script, they just kept on talking. <laughs> they, they produced uh, more communication than any one person had the ability to absorb. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, but, you know, they were very close. And, of course, after my father uh, passed away, my Aunt Ruth Daniso and my mother kept up the, tr the tradition of going out to these islands and gambling, of course. So my Aunt Ruth Daniso was very close to my mother after my father passed away, and I think people referred to them as the sisters. Um, 
which is pretty apt. I think that's a good name. <laughs> So anyways, they're on this casino, they're on this island, which is circular. The casino is in the middle, my Aunt Ruth is driving, and they're driving around the circumference of the island. You have to find the cutoff <laughs> that leads to the middle of the island where the casino is located. Um, so my Aunt Ruth is talking to my mother, and they miss this cutoff that leads to the casino. They're traveling the circumference of the island, they missed it. So my my dad, who's a man of few words, <laughs> says to my aunt, drive around again. That's it. He's hitting the back. That's what he said. <laughs> um, so again, they're driving the circumference of the island, and they miss the cutoff a second time. No wonder, because they're still talking back and forth. <laughs> that takes a lot of energy and concentration, so there's there's not that much energy for anything else. So, I mean, I know they eventually made it to the casino, but that was a story my mother told me. So, anyways, to conclude this, uh, if the, I don't believe in a great beyond. I'm just not a believer. But I do think that if you insist, if people insist that there's a great beyond, and that their loved ones are there, if people insist on that, then I have to insist that there's a casino there. <laughs> and my mother and my father are playing slots and blackjack. <laughs> I, I, I insist on that. Anyways, thank you. <laughs> shared with me that on a trip to a Vegas casino <laughs> you and Barbara were on the casino floor as were Ruth and Shirley and after some time you and Barbara before it got too terribly late went up to the room only to discover the next morning that Ruth and Shirley had stayed there quite, quite, quite late <laughs> into the night. I'm not quite sure if they made it all the way to sunrise, but it sounded like it was pretty close. And Andy, I'm glad you spoke about your parents' marriage and their great love for one another. Your father, who was taken from all of you much, much too soon. It was a great marriage and a great love affair that they had and they did love their travels and their cruises, family trips, which included cruises and family trips to Cedar Point, not so far from here, often followed by a week-long summer vacation, an annual summer trip to Cedar Point for a few days and then some car trip somewhere into the country. We can't measure a life or the quality of a life simply by the number of years a person lived. But Shirley was granted a long life and she used her time well. And she shared herself with all of you, her family, in the many, many years granted her. And while she gave up smoking many years ago, some of you, I'm not sure if the grandchildren might will remember as well, but some of you may remember that she wasn't really just a smoker way back when. She was a bit of a chain smoker. <laughs> she went from one cigarette to the next. <laughs> that, coupled with her daily dose, should I say, doses of scotch. <laughs> it's a bit curious how you make it to 95. Maybe, maybe there's a lesson in all of that. 
But it isn't just the length of years that made her life wonderful. It is, of course, how she lived, as I've said, and she was a caring and compassionate person, and most especially caring and compassionate mother and grandmother, as Justin spoke about. Andy, you emphasized when we spoke on the phone yesterday that one of the things that was most important to your mom when you and your sister were growing up was that you succeeded in school <clears throat> and that you were positioned to have a wonderful future. She stressed education and how important that was. I think it's no accident that Bobby wound up in the educational field. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> Let us remember on this day also the many cats, not just many cats over the years, but sometimes many cats all at once. One of you said at one point there were 10 cats in your house. It's a little bit hard to imagine. She didn't have to tell you or talk to you about the She acted and behaved. She was completely family oriented. She believed in taking care of each other and she did a good job at that. Tradition teaches that when we die, we take nothing with us from this world. Anything material we've acquired, we leave it all behind. The richest person in the world and the poorest pauper are completely equal in death. Whatever we've acquired, we leave it behind. And so the rabbis asked, what is it that survives us beyond the grave that has meaning and importance and significance, and they answered this way. That some people, in the way they lived, and the way they loved, in the years granted to them, be, them, be they few or many, some people acquire for themselves the Keter Semto, the crown of a good name. It's more valuable than any material goods. It's more precious than silver and gold. It's more precious than gemstones. for herself, her Keter Shem Tov, many, many times over. And it's now bequeathed to all of you, her family. And with every kindness that you perform, every time you help another person, especially a member of your own family, you wear the crown of her good name and you carry it into the future. With every generous act, you wear her crown, you honor her life, and you pay tribute to her memory. Zichronol Livrachal, the memory of a good and righteous person, is forever a blessing for all who knew her. A woman of valor is more precious than fine pearls. Her husband trusts in her and he lacks nothing. She does him good, never harm, all the days of her life. She knows that her labor is rewarding. Her candle burns on into the night. She reaches out to those in need and extends her hands to the poor. She is clothed in strength and dignity and she faces the future cheerfully. She speaks with wisdom. The law of kindness is upon her lips. Her children rise up and bless her. Her husband sings her praises. Many daughters have done valiantly, but you excel them all. From the 31st chapter of the book of Proverbs.
If it is easy for you to do so, I'd like to ask that you please rise at this time. If it is not so easy, please feel free to stay seated. All right. Well, you know, it's better not to do so. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Sarah Bat Chaim Vitoba to Shirley Pollock, for she has now entered eternity. O oh God of mercy, we pray, may Shirley find refuge in your eternal presence, and may her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance, and we say, Amen. Amen. We remain standing in a moment. We will conclude our service with the recitation of the mourner's Kaddish. It is, of course, incumbent upon the mourners to recite Kaddish, but here at the grave, I invite everyone who is here to join with them in reciting the Kaddish in Shirley's memory. Following Kaddish, anyone who wishes will be able to take a shovel full of earth, either from the bucket of earth that we have or from the mound of earth and place that into the grave in fulfillment of the mitzvah of chesed shel emet, the final kindness that we can perform for one we love. Tradition recognizes that this is the most emotionally difficult mitzvah there is to perform, but we are called upon to do so for our loved ones, not simply leaving their burial to others, but involving ourselves in their burial as one final way to pay tribute to their life, to honor them, and to show our love. And so following Kaddish, those who wish to do so may place earth into the grave and take part in Shirley's burial. Andy and Tina and Barry and family will observe Shiva this afternoon until 8 p.m. at the Markov home, 1023 West Mill Drive in Highland Heights. For those who may wish to honor Shirley's memory with a charitable contribution, her family suggests you direct your generosity to the Rescue Village in Novelty, Ohio. O God, in whose hands are the souls of all the living and the spirits of all flesh, standing at this grave, we thank you for all that was true and good in Shirley's life, for all that was sweet and inspiring in her character. We consecrate this hour to her memory, and we bring a message of consolation to the mourners. May your love comfort, comfort and sustain us that walking in the valley of the shadow of death, we may see your light. Help us, O oh God, to honor Shirley by our actions and our aspirations. May her memory lead us to love you with all of our hearts. 
then indeed her memory will be a blessing. Mourner's Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash me'i rabo v'yalman d'ibra k'irutei v'yamlich l'achutei v'chayi chon v'yomei chon v'chayi d'chol b'yit Yisrael v'agala v'yizman tari v'yimru amei v'yeheish me'i rabo n'varach le'olam v'olomei olmaya yitvarach v'yishtabach v'yitvarach v'yitramam v'yitnaseh V'yitadar, v'yitalev, v'yitalal, shimei n'kudishat, v'yitru. L'elam yitko birchata v'shirata, t'ushbechata v'nechamata, v'amiran v'yalma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Ose shalom v'imromam, u'ya ase shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael. Amen. We conclude our service with these traditional words of consolation. Hamakom yinachem echem, betok shar av leitzion Jerusalem. May God grant you comfort, and may you who mourn be comforted, along with all the mourners in Zion and Jerusalem and our community. Amen. Barry, right over here. Yeah, that's. Anyone else wishing to have an opportunity to place some earth, come forward. Yeah,